Good afternoon, everyone. What a what, very exciting to be here. What a wonderful turnout this festival. Uh, so many engaging conversations showing really the breadth and the depth of innovation in InsureTech. And not only in Asia, uh, we see people even in the panel coming from different parts of the world. So thank you, thank you for being here. So today we have two distinguished leaders uh, in the insurance sector. Pleasure to be here, welcome. Thank you, good to be here. Thank you. As today, now the, the global economy, like if you measure at GDP, is around just over actually $100 trillion. And the insurance industry is 6% of that, more or less. So $6 trillion, very large industry. But, but actually, um, the gap between what's being supplied and the demand for insurance is also very large. So if we think about the protection gap, uh, the main protection gap in the, in the general insurance industry, it was estimated at $1.8 trillion last year. Out-of-pocket expenses in healthcare around 2% of GDP, very large too. And so there is enormous opportunity and also longevity of growth if, only if, we can actually bridge this gap, right, between supply and demand. And there's a reason for this gap um, to exist. Uh, and we'll be talking a little bit about it. We'll be talking about the opportunity for insurtech and actually double-clicking on this inspiring uh, story of Boltech. Uh, three-year-old uh, insurtech, as, as Rob describes it. Obviously, the, the three-year-old grew quite a bit and is today an international uh, insurtech uh, headquarters here in Singapore. And so let's start by saying um, how the three of us came together. Um, so namatami san and, and, and I uh, are board members at Boltech. Uh, we represent two shareholders. I don't yet have the tennis shoes, but, <laughs> but I'll get one, Rob. You have to give one to me. Um, but um, yes, so we represent two, two investors. Uh, I represent Leapfrog, uh, and Amatami San represents Tokyo Marine. So, so let's start there. Namatami San, do you, why don't you share with us um, Tokyo Marine's approach to investing in sure tech? Uh, your encounter with the Boltech right, team, right. and ultimately, why did you invest in Boltech? Okay, Fernando, thank you, and Rob, it's always good to see you. So, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as introduced, I'm Masa Namatame, Group Chief Digital Officer of Tokyo Marine Holdings. Uh, before talking about Tokyo Marine Holdings, uh, let's start by introducing who I am and uh, what I did uh, in my career. Uh, I started my career in the financial derivatives area uh, for 10 years. And thereafter, I worked for investment banking, Morgan Stanley and Deutsche Bank for 15 years. Thereafter, I worked for Visa as a country management for Japan. And then I worked for BlackRock as a member of the board for BlackRock Japan. And six years ago, I had the honor to join Tokyo Marine. And I became CDO three years and a half, half, half ago. During the, this you know, 35, 36 years of experiences, uh, there has been a uh, overwhelming notion that uh, financial services uh, would definitely deemed to converge into technology. T I mean, technology industry, financial services industry has in common, uh, you know, being able to contribute to the whole world uh, by creating, you know, combining uh, the mutual expertise in one place. Uh, as a result of that, uh, financial derivatives is one of the, one of the examples. Uh, trading is one of the examples. Credit card payment had been uh, entirely electrified in the last you know, 15 or 20 years ago. And these days, you know, emerging newer uh, fintech players uh, all over the world. And InsurTech is one of them. And with that, uh, I have been keeping uh, within myself that you know, what an InsurTech business is supposed to be by applying the notion that the financial services converging uh, with uh, technology businesses. And for whatever reason, uh, the company Tokyo Marine has appointed me uh, as a chief digital officer like four years ago. And uh, from the starting point, uh, the, you know, uh, the search of our most successful uh, t technology insure tech players uh, in the world uh, is one of my priorities as a chief digital officer. Uh, because 
Tokyo Marine, uh, with its uh, as its name suggests, uh, based in Tokyo, a Japanese uh, domestic insurance companies. But during the last 20 years, uh, the proportion of you know, overseas businesses has gradually growing, but through the acquisition of $25 billion uh, during the last 20 years. Now, today, uh, our uh, business, majority of our business, consists uh, from, from non-Japanese uh, businesses. With that, uh, the digitalization is not just only for the Japanese domestic financial services. We need to look at you know, who could be the uh, most uh, promising global scale uh, insurtech players in the world. And uh, in the last you know, four years, I've been meeting with as many as hundreds uh, of uh, insurance, uh, insurtech related players all over the world, including United States, Asia, Europe, Australia, South America. And uh, we have made certain minor relationship uh, you know, during this, this period. So far, we have made as many as you know, 60 or 70 uh, insurtech investment and entered into a strategic alliances. But uh, the journey has not necessarily been fulfilled uh, until uh, the day we met with Love, uh, just about a year and a half ago. And actually, it was you know, so shocking to me uh, because not only just because the you know, Baltics business is unique, but also the, uh, the directions of the you know, Baltics in trying to create uh, is uh, one of the kind, unprecedented and uh, never been seen uh, elsewhere in the world. And I, from my working experiences working for Visa, uh, creating a new world payment systems, I've been equally as shocked as, in a, as if I saw Visa's payment system you know, for, for the first time. So basically, a uh, year and a half ago, for very first meetings, I have been personally pretty much committed uh, to make uh, investment and entered into a strategic alliance relationship with Rob. And the very second meetings, uh, just in a couple of uh, months later, uh, we have pretty much agreed uh, to make a very sizable uh, investment as a lead investor and to, be, uh, cr to create a meaningful strategic relationship with Baltic. So uh, the, the, in, to answer to Fernando your question, uh, the you know, overall you know, theme is you know, convergence of technology and the financial services, and the insurance is no ex exception to that. And uh, during the last 10 years or so, we've been searching uh, the, those kind of you know, occasions all over the world, making a small steps you know, one by one, but finally, we've been able to meet with Rob and Baltic people and uh, making our significant steps you know, one step forward uh, as a way to create our embedded insurance ecosystem uh, all, all over the world. No, needless to say, you know, Baltics has been engaged into the businesses across you know, 31 countries in the world, uh, whereas you know, Tokyo Marine is engaging in businesses in 46 countries in the world. So by combining uh, mutual and expertise and capabilities, uh, we will be 100% confident that we will be a meaningful contributor to the insurance related areas, insurance industries, and as a result of that, to the whole society overall. That's the kind of background to your question. Fantastic. And obviously some similarities with, with our decision too. Um, Leapfrog, I mean, we invest also with the angle of financial inclusion. Uh, so our mission is profit with purpose. So if you think about profit, similarly to Tokyo Marine, obviously um, we, we want, uh, my job is really to deliver private equity growth returns to, to my investors, to my LPs, that's my job. And we have invested, invested in, 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 in Boltec with our Fund 4. So we've been investing for 15 years. Um, a big chunk of that investment, over $2 billion, was in uh, insurance companies. And what caught our attention uh, and made us invest in Boltec uh, on the profit side was obviously this 50% growth and margins, capital light model that they managed to, to develop. Um, the path to profitability, um, and also really the, the quality of the team and the shareholders backing the company, right? They, they have hard-nosed private equity investors like ourselves. They have uh, SOEs like Kazana and EDB, as well as, as strategics um, like Token Marine, MetLife, and so on. So, so a really powerful combination of partnerships, as Namatami Sam was describing, on the profit with purpose, on the purpose size, Purpose side, purpose for us 
is, is really to have our portfolio companies uh, delivering a positive social impact. And what it means to us uh, in the context of insurance is that 4 billion emerging consumers do not have good access to insurance. And these are the people who are most vulnerable, most vulnerable to economic shocks, most vulnerable to, to climate change. Um, and these families need insurance to be less vulnerable and to progress in life. Uh, but obviously, and, and actually surprisingly, um, they, they also have purchasing power. We do a research um, with 4,000 emerging consumers every year. And number two in their list, in terms of what do they want to buy for their, their families, is actually protection, is actually insurance. So they not only understand the need, they want to buy, but obviously for this family, it needs to be affordable. It needs to be obviously high quality, like for everyone, uh, and it needs to be um, easy to buy, right? It needs to be contextual, ideally embedded. Um, and obviously, Boltec is, 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 is delivering, is, is, is actually providing a solution for especially that segment of the population in our view. So talking about execution, maybe we should turn to Rob. <laughs> Rob, why don't you tell us a little bit about the journey uh, and, and Boltec and, and your three-year-old baby, as you say? We are, in fact, a three-year-old baby. I'd like to begin that. And, and I want to also say, Fernanda and Namatami-san, thank you for being investors. Thank you for being board members, for your valuable insights and advice, and, of course, for the capital that helps make Boltec succeed. Um, I'd just like to maybe rewind for a second and say, so what is Boltec? And then I'll put a few of these things into context for you. So we are a high-growth international insurtech. We focus on providing tailored, affordable insurance products to consumers. And we're focused on delivering that in a B2B to C model, which means we're doing that through our distribution partners, through their platforms. And our real objective here is to accelerate the access that millions of customers have to high quality insurance across the 35 markets that we operate in on four different continents. So if I take those words and I break them down into a couple of thoughts, I say, okay, we are here providing tailored and affordable insurance products to consumers. That's our space, consumer space. And exactly as you said, Fernanda, it needs to be a contextual product that really focuses on what is the consumer asking for, not what did we want to push to them, but what were they asking for, and it has to be affordable, especially if we have any hope of helping to provide a bit of help in closing this very significant protection gap that we see here in a number of the continents that we operate in. So that's sort of our space. We love being part of an ecosystem. We are not the big disruptor in this business. In fact, we like to consider ourselves to be the enabler for this business. We connect distribution partners who have customers that they want to serve, who they want to provide access to protection products. We connect them to the providers of those protection products the insurers. And as you said, Fernanda, we try to do this in a balance sheet light way, which means we are not the ones who are actually producing each of these products. We don't have a, if we didn't create it, it's not good mentality. We actually believe that many of you out here provide awesome capabilities and products. And what we need to do is help to accelerate the access to those awesome capabilities and products to the end consumer. And so we've been on this journey, as you've heard, for the last three and a half years. We have an amazing team across 35 countries, and every day they're waking up saying, how can we better accelerate this process of getting this capability into the hands of the people who need it? Very good. So in summary, what is your secret sauce? would you say? My, my summary on the secret sauce is it actually begins with the team. Mm -hmm. So we built 
Boltec, and maybe sometimes as a founder, I probably was criticized at times for building a company at the very beginning with an awesome team. Um, because you can't afford an awesome team, right? But I would say you can't afford not to have an awesome team. And so when I look at the caliber of the talent on the Boltec organization, and hopefully some of you have had access to them, and I know that Fernando Yu and Namatami san have gotten exposure to this team, you know, but in the end, there are people who have many years of expertise either in insurance or in technology. Because if you're gonna be the proper intersection of insurance and technology, you need both sets of capabilities. And so our chief technology officer, David Lynch, he helped DBS to create their space as being one of the leaders in the digital banking space. Our chief product officer was along with David in that journey, helping DBS and Standard Chartered in that space. We recognize that the best tech expertise in the world might not come from insurance companies. It might come from somewhere else in financial services. And so it was really about saying, where do you get that talent? And the only other comment I'll make real quick here is, I have 12 direct reports in Boltec who live on four continents and in eight different countries. We have access to, I think, some of the best talent in the world and they're not individual experts, they're a great team. And so sometimes we have to do things a little bit virtually, sometimes we're able to get everyone together, but the key is we focused on capability and chemistry and teamwork over anything, and that is the secret sauce. Fantastic, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, uh, for, Rob, uh, first of all, what you said exactly reminds me what I heard about a year and a half ago. This is story you know, that you explained uh, to the audiences uh, is exactly, uh, that, exactly you know, what fascinates me uh, when we first met uh, 18 months ago. So to me, uh, the, the purpose of Baltic uh, pretty much uh, you know, aligns with the purpose of uh, Tokyo Marines as an insurance, group, com insurance company. Uh, of course, you know, insurance company, the primary purpose of our you know, capabilities is to protect the gaps or to, to protect their unexpected losses or unexpected accidents and uh, protect the people uh, from any uh, you know, unreasonable uh, incidents uh, that, may, that may potentially occur to any of you. Uh, however, uh, you know, going forward, uh, I would say that uh, it's gonna, it, it, ha it has uh, many other meanings uh, for the greater society. One of the things is you know, how we can be, uh, be better off in providing affordable insurance products. Uh, that's one of the strengths of the Baltic. To me, insurance is not just a protector. Insurance is a great equalizer for the society, meaning that the, you know, some of you uh, might have incurred some you know, unexpected, un unreasonable losses or diseases or accidents. But the insurance creates the ecosystem where such losses is not just an only born to you. As a whole society, it's being split out uh, to the older entire society, and so that you know, our entire society can protect, uh, as a whole, can protect those of you who might suffer from the unreasonable losses uh, and accidents. So going forward, insurance companies, uh, the mission of the insurance services uh, is not just in protecting. Go, in, going beyond, it's gonna be equalizing the people, equalizing the society, and thereafter creating a new society, creating a new world, and the protect, equalize, create, and accelerate the society, and they finally enable the people to take another challenges. So as we foresee the development of the society you know, as a whole, as long as we believe the society to continue to develop, to create a better well-being for our entire people, insurance company, insurance services will definitely play a meaning role uh, in order for, uh, as a way to create a peaceful society. To me, so making the affordable insurances is one of the top priorities for us. So, and uh, we can only do so by working together with such companies like Baltic. Rob, what, what is the future of, of InsurTech and the, the impact? I hope have? that the future of InsurTech, we've only seen the beginning. You could think of it like an iceberg. Maybe we've seen the top 10%. Mm -hmm. 
I think the remaining 90% that we haven't seen is super exciting and, that, and that's going to be um, what we can all look forward to. Obviously, it will be impacted by technology. When people talk today about um, artificial intelligence and, and large language models, remember it's a continuation. We were born in the world of technology. So for us, you know, we are a digital native, we are a technology driven organization, but I think we've only just scratched the surface in terms of where technology will take us. And there's no doubt that that's going to influence, maybe be the greatest influence on this marketplace in the, in the next coming years. The next, um, the next thing is that really we have to break down an old way of thinking. There's a lot of inertia in the insurance business. I've been in this business for a long, long time. And one of our worst enemies is this, um, it's never been done before, so we can't do it. Or um, we've always done it this way, so there's no need to change it. Or I didn't build it, so it might not be good. Or I can do it myself. If we all have a very different set of behaviors, a different attitude, and instead we create a if we can cooperate, and even if we're competitors, then let's have a, a sense of coopetition. We can compete with one another, but let's move this in the same direction because this is an industry that can benefit, but not if we're all trying to do the same things in different ways in an unconnected way. The concept of creating an ecosystem we're recognizing that are, there are enablers out there that can help us move all of this industry much faster. Sometimes it's technology, but our biggest, our biggest path to the future isn't necessarily just going to be technology. It's going to be changing our mindsets to a more cooperative, more collaborative style as an industry. And if we do that, the sky is the limit. I certainly agree, and there's a lot to do, and InsurTech has a role to play for sure. Voltec and, and others who are here also in the room. Lots of questions coming. Thank you for the energy, and, and the questions we'll try to cover uh, some of them. Rob, you, 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 you did an acquisition of, of Digital Care, um, phenomenal footprint in Africa, actually, and, and Eastern Europe countries. Tell us about Boltec impacting, and I'm a bit biased, emerging consumers and emerging markets. We, we recently did an acquisition of a company called Digital Care out of Poland. Um, Digital Care has operations <coughs> in Europe, in Asia, and in Africa. And so when you think about this being especially an Eastern European focus, you can imagine that we're getting access to the ability to help many more people than otherwise we would have seen. And of course, our first toe onto the African continent. And so one really big thing for us is if we want to accelerate the pace of bringing protection to these markets, we have to be in the market in the first place. So we were super excited by the additional scope that we have geographically with digital care. But the really important thing to always remember, especially when you're a baby in SureTech is, you know, we are taking our investors' capital and we have to deploy it super smartly and never lose track of the original vision behind why they put money behind a Boltec in the first place. So everything about the company we acquired fits into our existing vision. We didn't have to change anything. They fit into our capability set. We bring capability to them that they didn't have. They bring capability to us that we didn't have, and together, it's a one plus one equals three. That kind of behavior is critically important. We're super excited about what it is that we think we can do to places we didn't previously have access to or reach to in the past. Well, uh, I think uh, Rob was humble enough to describe himself as a baby company. Because uh, it's uh, only a uh, five years of history he, since the incorporation. Uh, Tokyo Marine has a uh, 144 years old history, so basically it's uh, totally opposite uh, of the industry's uh, landscape. Uh, however, the same notion uh, exactly applies to us as well. Because you know we have uh, such a long history, b basically a very old-fashioned company. So there is an inertia there. Uh, we need to change a lot of things uh, from the way we have done before. Uh, so in order for us to do that, 
uh, we cannot just do it by ourselves. Uh, we need to borrow uh, lots of new strengths from outside. Uh, we need to be enlightened uh, ourselves uh, uh, you know, from the outside uh, capabilities. And as a result of that, you know, uh, just you know, from the analogy of the baby, uh, we need to rejuvenate ourselves uh, from the, in the, into the 21st century. So uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, five years old company, 144 years old, old company, working together, creating uh, new services and uh, benefits and values uh, using the power of digital. Uh, that's how fascinating, and that's how, that's how wonderful. That's uh, that's the kind of power of you know working in our borderless 21st century, isn't it? So. Yes. It is definitely lots of questions coming. <clears throat> Rob, a couple more for you as well. <clears throat> So talking about um, accelerating access, right? Um, there's a few questions around the same theme. Um, how to overcome um, sometimes costly and long time integration? And how have you also integrated with some of the ecosystem here in, in Singapore? <laughs> the, the whole big obstacle of being able to work with partners tends to be around the technology integration we have focused so much of our time on what we call hyper-connectivity. The ability to make ourselves connectable into our partners as quickly and as seamlessly as possible. We're still a baby in that. Um, the capabilities around that space will continue to, to really evolve very quickly in the coming years. But the concept of building ourselves to be API integratable and also to, to focus on how can we scale lessons we learn in one geography, in another geography, or with another partner really quickly. And so we focus on scalability and we focus on hyper-connectivity so that if we have those two capabilities, we should be attractive in any market with any partner. Fantastic. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so another one on specifically emerging markets. Um, you've been operating in countries that are high growth, like Vietnam, Philippines, um, and others. How are you delivering uh, insurtech uh, insurance to, to these markets that are very low penetration, different needs, and operate in a different way than, than Singapore, for example? When I described our business model, I said, that we work um, through our distribution partners and through their platforms. We are purposefully a B2B2C organization because we want to be able to have access to potential consumers who need this capability, not one consumer at a time, but thousands at a time, hundreds of thousands at a time, a million or more at a time. And so we're focusing on how do we work with the big partners in any of these developing markets who have access to really big groups of customers who have some sort of affinity. They have an affinity with that distribution partner. They have an affinity with one another. And any of those things that give us the ability to do this once, focus on a group where we can tailor our product specifically to that group and focus on de delivering an affordable product because we can do it at scale for that group, that for us has been the recipe that we've been trying to focus on. We have so much more to learn, I call us a baby. That's because we recognize with humility that there are so many things that a 144 year old insurer like Tokyo Marine can teach us just like there are things that as a baby, we can help to teach them about how to remember your youthful childhood days when you could move fast and be spry. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for both of you. I think we are on time. Any final words? Well, I just wanted to say you'll notice that Namatami Asad and I have the same shoes. Um, <laughs> they, that says Boltec on one side, Tokyo Marine on the other side. Um, we have supply chain issues here following COVID, and so therefore we don't yet have Fernanda's <laughs> shoes. But the next time you see the three of us on stage, I hope that you see a set of Boltec Leapfrog shoes, Boltec shoes, and uh, Boltec uh, Tokyo Marine shoes. 
but uh, and by the way, if any of you want to invest, we'll make shoes for you too. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.